We will now listen to Lucia Nikolsonova, which uh, um, will enter uh, digitally <laughs> or from the distance, I think. Yes, yes uh, thank you very much for giving me the floor. I hope you can all hear me and you can see me. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, social rights protection and the rule of law, these are very wide, wide topics. And, uh, you know, as a former journalist, I visited uh, many separated and segregated Roma settlements in Slovakia. And we have hundreds of them with uh, approximately 200,000 people. Some of them without public water, without gas, without electricity. There are no community centers, no education, no jobs, no future. When I entered any of these communities, immediately I got surrounded by kids, half naked, dirty hands, hair covered by lice. And once I noticed tiny little scars on their cheeks. What is it? I asked. The rats come and bite us during nights. I met 12 years old girls who were pregnant. Do you understand what happened? that you are going to become a mother, I asked. No, I don't know what happened. The gentleman said I was beautiful. Most of the Roma kids end up in special schools. Majority of them finishes their primary education in the sixth grade of a special school at the age of 16, and they barely can read or write. Some girls finish the elementary school even earlier because they get pregnant. Some years ago, I visited Sasa Lomno. This is a separated Roma settlement, 10 kilometers from the nearest village, at the very top of a high mountain. And there are no paved roads. There is no public water, no electricity, no gas, and sometimes no houses in Sasa Lomno. Some of the 60 people live in holes they dig in the ground, even families with kids. And uh, I met a woman there. She had no fingers and no toes. What happened? I asked. Nothing. They froze and fell off. Do you have a job? And to this, she didn't even answer. She just laughed. So where are the social rights of these people relating to the workplace, to cultural life, social security, family life, no access to housing? No food, no water, no health care, and no quality education. Now, this is a member state that has been using the EU funds for decades now. So where did the money go when there are still hundreds of places in conditions worse than in the third world countries? What has been stopping us in lifting the living conditions in the socially excluded communities? It is the misuse of EU funds, high rate of corruption, the unwillingness to see and unveil the misuse and corruption on the national, but also on the EU level. And uh, on the national level, it is the bad habit of national politics to pick up only problems that you can visibly solve in the scope of your political mandate but to cut the vicious circle of the intergenerational poverty. This is a long term run. And uh, this does not fit in the length of the political mandate. So here are the main questions, the main dilemmas. Should a country with a serious failures in social rights protection continue to use the EU funds? And what will happen to the vulnerable people when we stop access to the funding? Now, as it has been said, we have very noble idea of the European pillar of social rights to pull 15 million EU citizens from poverty. And we have the action plan to translate pillars principles into reality. And we have the unprecedented package of EU money to use to meet the goals, to achieve social objectives and, and socially sustainable recovery. The member states have available 1.8 trillion euros. Those funds have to be used to make social rights reality. Here, the mechanism on the rule of law conditionality has to step in to effectively combat fraudulent practices when using the EU budget. 
The rule of law also implies non-discriminatory access to social rights, but unfortunately, as you have heard, we are still facing severe problems in the social sphere, which can be partially attributed to the lack of respect for, our, for the rule of law. Many of the problems are linked to discrimination in various aspects. So I really think we need a proper monitoring and evaluation indicators to measure the reality of the situation on the ground. And only then we can see and measure the impact of our policies and the efficiency of the used funds. Because only when we have the data, we can actually strive for socially sustainable policies that would make real changes in the lives of Europeans, even those ones who live in socially excluded communities. And I strongly think that only then we can talk about Europe where no one is left behind. Thank you very much and greetings from Brussels.